The year of the beefalo is here, everyone. And while it may not have been exactly what we were expecting, it sure is still filled with furry fun and beautiful beefs. The event has also brought with it a crap ton of new skins, of which we'll be showcasing soon. But do note that there are a couple login bonuses that I will not spoil for you. And there is a wonderfully vibrant and lovely sounding main menu now, of course. But let's break down this event, shall we? And like with all Year of Events, everything about this one will come from a shrine. The Beefalo Shrine. Spend some golden boards, place it down wherever you wish to, make it an offering of beefalo fur, and then the Offerings tab will now be available to you. And within this tab will be many returning crafts from previous Year of Events. But our main focus for now will be on all the new Beefalo Event kits and plenty more. So let's discuss. And spoiler alert, there is a beauty pageant on the horizon. A pageant that will be in need of a judge. So construct the judge's booth yourself, place it in a decently open area, mind you, click on it to start the booth itself, and be greeted by none other than the innkeeper everyone, aka the curio collector. So he has finally moved his lazy, greedy butt from out of the curio cabinet after all these years and is now into the world proper. But he is ready to hold the contest and we aren't. We need a stage or two. Actually, it looks like we need at least four. So get to crafting some beefalo stages here, folks. Then head on back to the judge's booth and you should notice that it has a radius to it. So be sure to plant these four stages within it or else you won't exactly be able to participate in the mini event properly. It's simple enough, but we ain't quite done yet, mind you. Cause the heck is a beefalo beauty pageant without any dang beefaloes. Thankfully, getting one to take part will not be requiring even an ounce of domestication as the event itself provides us with these. Beefalo bells. Make one, find a beefalo, mouse over them, and we can then bond ourselves to them for what seems like forever. Or, you know, until you break the bond or they die, I suppose. But whatever the case, these beefalo bells also allow us to name our bonded beefaloes. And even though they are not domesticated in any way, shape, or form, they will still follow us around all the same. Good starts. But do note this. Only one beefalo bond can exist at a time per player, so don't waste your time with more bells for now. Instead, it's time to start looking fancy. Well... Actually, it's the beefalo's time for that, but craft yourself a grooming station kit here, place it down wherever you please, click on it to hitch your bonded beefalo to it, click on it again to literally dress up your beefalo, and be greeted by a set of costumes and costume parts ready to doll your beef up. Sometimes, literally, but we'll get to that. For now, I'm not sure if everyone starts with the same Victorian ensemble fully unlocked from the get-go. However, I imagine so, because how else will we be looking snazzy for our first pageant coming up? So equip what you can, and yes, it's time for the event. Hitch your costumed beefalo to one of the stages we made earlier. Call back the innkeeper, and it shall begin. The innkeeper will summon a set of pigmen and merms to help fill out the rest of the stages with their very own unique beefalo, as they're all taking part in this contest too. The innkeeper will then fire through a whole spiel about how his favorite beefalo changes daily, and he will actually say what he is looking for, be it a more former looking beefalo, a scary one, a festive one, and so on. Then, it will be up to us and the other participants to actually pick a beefalo that we think best suits his descriptions. And no, it actually does not have to be your own. And that's kind of key, actually. Also, no need to rush per se, because multiple people can pick the same beefalo if they think it's the right one. You are on the clock, but not really. So good luck.
And once all the contestants have picked and the innkeeper has called the event, he will then just go down the list of his top three beefaloes, starting from his least favorite of the bunch. It is a whole thing that is very self-explanatory, because you either win with the placement or you don't. But don't worry. Even if your own beefalo didn't win, or if you picked one that didn't even win at all either, you still get some participation prizes. Like the other quote unquote year of events, red pouches will provide us with lucky gold nuggets that we'll be using later on. But for now, let's talk these pattern scraps that the innkeeper has just thrown out at us because they are the most important thing. And there are three different types of the suckers. Formal, festive, and fearsome pattern scraps. By their lonesome, they do absolutely nothing. Therefore, here's where the sewing machine kit comes into play. Craft one using a stinger, gold, and silk and place it down. Then, open the dang thing up in order to place a set of three of these pattern scraps into it to begin the sewing process. There are actual, precise combinations for particular costumes that we will soon fire through here. However, let us talk the main process. Sew a design together, receive a pattern costume, learn it, get an extra reward that we'll also be talking about here in a minute, head on back to your grooming station, be sure to hitch your bonded beefalo to it if it isn't already, play some dress up once again, and this new costume should be ready to roll. Very, very fun. But it's time to collect them all. Two formal pattern scraps and one festive scrap will result in the dolled up costume sets. Two fearsome scrap patterns and one formal pattern scrap will allow us to dress up our beefaloes as a warrior with the warrior costume here. A single festive scrap pattern plus two fearsome scraps will give us the cool looking frostbitten costume, which I now want in the game following this event for sure. And honestly, the same might go for this robot costume here too, that we can sew together using three fearsome scrap patterns alone. But next comes the Lucky Beast costume, which we ourselves will later be wearing, but for a beef to wear it, it will be needing two festive pattern scraps and one fearsome one. Three straight formal pattern scraps will lead us to the formal costume itself, and I suppose we should have seen that one coming. And in a similar vein comes the festive costume, which comes from sewing together three straight festive pattern scraps here. But two festive pattern scraps and one formal one will result in this here flowery costume if you wish. And lastly, the Victorian costume is made via a fearsome scrap piece, festive scrap piece, and formal scrap piece all together. So enjoy. But why sew a costume you already have or do one more than once, Beard? Well, because every sewn costume comes with a corresponding beefalo doll. And while these do serve a slight purpose in relation to the event itself, you could choose to give them to the Pig King for three gold each if you wish. But yes, about their truer purpose per se, giving them to the innkeeper for him to inspect will allow us to further understand how he himself judges the competition. Not only the entire costumes within them, but the pieces of the costumes as well. For you see, just like the other participants, there is nothing to stop us from mixing and matching costumes. And this could be our ticket to consistent victory. Well, that's, or honestly just picking a beef that isn't yours all the time, really. Once you get the hang of knowing which costumes fit the categories best, it becomes really easy to just pick at least a top two beef every time. Just listen to the keeper, pick which beefalo best fits with formal, festive, fearsome or otherwise, which you can just determine via giving him the dolls or just looking at the costumes for Pete's sake. And who knows, you might actually get first place now and then, friends, even if it's not your own beefalo. Again, that's a key part of this. But it looks like a first place choice nets us six lucky gold nuggets. However, I am unsure if having our own beefalo win the whole thing will actually result in more, because half the time I'm truly just picking the others and winning regardless. Plus, it looks like the scrap patterns he actually throws out are pretty random. So there's that. 
There are time limits, however. The innkeeper will not run a contest too late into the day. So essentially, this is a one-time thing per day, really. But about these lucky gold nuggets, what's their deal? Well, we could choose to spend them on any of the three scrap patterns we've been getting, if we're not actually getting the ones we need following a contest. Or, we can buy the new Beefalo figure sketch with eight lucky gold nuggets, in order to craft a Beefalo statue itself with a potter's wheel, of course. The red firecrackers are exactly that, everyone. Firecrackers that are flipping red. So craft some, place them down, light them up, and celebrate a new year, folks. Enjoy. The Red Lantern can also be taken at face value, as it is literally a Red Lantern that can be carried by us or dropped on the ground all the while throwing off some useful red lights. Now, the Floating Lantern, on the other hand, cannot be held. However, it will still be providing us some lovely light all the same. So toss a few of these around base, and it will sure look pretty. Do note, though, the lanterns do not last forever, but it's all good stuff nonetheless. And lastly, the Lucky Beast Parts. They are essentially all the same, as they all lead to a very special dance emote, so you will have to just decide whether or not you want the beast head, body, or tail. But have fun. And before we wrap up, we actually got two last notes here. This event sees the ability to collect resources off the top of beefaloes when we are riding them come into the fold, as well as bonded beefalo being able to follow us down under them in the flipping caves. Now, the former is a great change and I hope it stays around, even if it was not intended. However, the latter likely won't, so enjoy it while you can. But there you have everyone, the year of the Beefalo event within Don't Starve Together. I think it is certainly one of the simpler ones that we've had over the years, but it's still quite an involved one nonetheless. There are lots of costumes to collect and plenty of contests to totally not lose, but you still lose anyways. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Enjoy yourselves out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.